Welcome back. So in the last few lectures, we have seen how to use recurrence relations to model various counting problems. Now, as we have told, recurrence relations are a very essential part of mathematics or particularly in counting. So in fact, a recurrence relation is an equation that recursively defines a sequence of or multi a sequence or a multi-dimensional array of values where there are some initial terms and the nth term is defined as a function of the pre preceding terms. So, recurrence relations is extensively used for combinatorics, analysis of algorithms, in computational biology, in theoretical economics and many other subjects. So we have already seen some of the recurrence relations and we have seen how recurrence relations can be used to model various problems, particularly combinatorics problems. But we have not seen how to solve recurrence relations. In this video, we will be focusing on how to solve recurrence relations. So here are some of the recurrence relations that do appear in real life problems. So the first one say t1 equals to 1 and tn equals to 2 plus tn minus 1. The second one say t1 equals to 1, t2 equals to 2 and tn is equals to tn minus 1 plus tn minus 2. Or this one is what we got from the Tower of Hanoi problem where h1 equals to 1, h2 equals to 2 and hn equals to 2 times hn minus 1 plus 1. Uh, this one is basically what we have the Fibonacci series where f1 equals to 1, f2 equals to 1 and fn equals to fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2. This is what is known as the Fibonacci series. It's quite a famous series that we uh, that appears again and again in real life. Then we have this one b1 equals to 1 and bn equals to bn over 2 plus 1. Then we have m1 equals to 1 and mn equals to 2 times m n over 2 plus n. So this two appears in um, various algorithms, particularly the binary search algorithm and the merge sort algorithm that are very popular in the algorithms literature. And then we have a slightly more complicated one, c1 equals to 1 and cn plus 1 is equal to summation of i equals to 1 to 0 to n ci cn minus i. Now, for all of them, we have to now understand how one can solve them. So, what is the technique for solving any of these recurrent, recurrent, uh, recurrences? Right? So, how to solve these recurrences? Now, the first technique that we are going to look at is the simple thing of guess the solution and prove using induction. In this video, we will see how this technique is useful and then we will, in the next video, we will see how one can guess the solution. So say here we have this example, t1 equals to 1, tn equals to 2 plus tn minus 1. Now, how do you solve this particular problem? Now, first of all, if somehow magically you can guess this number, then we are great. Say, for example, if I tell you that, oh, guess that tn equals to 2n minus 1. Now, if this is the guess that we make, then we can try to prove this statement using induction. So the technique is first guess and then prove by induction. 
Now I have skipped a big chunk of how to guess this number. We will see that one, see the technique of guessing in the next video as well as in the next whole week. Guessing the solution for the recurrence relation is possibly the most challenging part of solving the recurrence relation. But in this video, we will be focusing on how to solve the guess if we have the induction, uh, if we have the guess right. If we guess the thing right, how do you prove it? Right? So, how do you prove by induction? Now, if you remember, so we should have a base case. In this case, base case is say n equals to 1 and we have okay t1 is equals to 1 this is something that is given and which is of course same as t2 times 1 minus 1 right so this value is correct for t1 right and now we have the induction hypothesis induction hypothesis which says that say for some n tn equals to 2 times n minus 1 and in that case what is the inductive step? Inductive step is to prove the same statement for t of n plus 1 which is 2 times n plus 1 minus 1 which is 2n minus plus 1. Now how do we prove it? Now of course by the thing that has been given to us t of n plus 1 equals to 2 times 2 plus t of n right which is equals to 2 plus 2n minus 1 by the so this is by induction hypothesis which is equals to of course 2n plus 1 and that is what we had to prove right hence we are done hence we are proved the inductive step that means tn equals to 2n minus 1 which is the, for all n greater than or equal to 1 Right? So this is the proof by induction for how once we have the guess, right? Okay. So let's go over the next one. One more example say. So this is example two says that t1 equals to 1 and tn equals to n plus tn minus 1. Again, first of all, you have to guess it and let's imagine that somebody just comes up and manages to guess it correctly and says, somebody comes up says that tn equals to n into n plus 1 by 2. Now, once someone has guessed it, we have to prove it. We have to ensure that the guess is right and to get it that's true, we have to again use induction. So like in the earlier case, we have to again prove this one by induction and let's see how we prove it again. The base case, n equals to 1, of course t1 equals to 1 which is 1 times 1 plus 1 by 2 right which is what so the thing is correct for the case or the case n equals to 1 now we have the induction hypothesis what is this says that tn equals to tn sorry tn equals to n into n plus 1 by 2. Now in inductive step, 
we have to prove that t of n plus 1 equals to n plus 1 into n plus 2 by 2. Now, how do we prove it? Now, t of n plus 1 has been given as n plus t n minus 1. which is n plus see, n into n plus 1 by 2. This is by induction hypothesis. Which is, if I take the sorry, I made a mistake here. This is not n this should be n plus 1, right? So, this is also, this is because T n equals to n plus T n minus 1. So, T n plus 1 has to be n plus 1 plus T n. And this is equals to n plus 1 plus the given induction hypothesis which is n into n plus 1 by 2. So, now I can take n plus 1 common. In that case, I get 1 plus n by 2. So, this is 2 plus n by 2, which is, of course, n plus 1 into n plus 2 by 2, which is what we had to prove. Right. So, we have T of n equals to n into n plus 1 by 2 for all n greater than or equal to 1. Again, the idea is simple. If you can guess the value correctly for Tn, then you can prove what Tn is by induction. Right? So let us see one more example. What can be the various guesses? So this is the set tower of Hanoi problem. Right? So T1 H1 equals to 1 and Hn equals to 1 plus H n minus 1. Again, we first have to guess it. Now, what is the guess here? So, the guess is Hn equals to 2 power n minus 1. And again, we have to prove this one by induction. Note here that if we guess it wrong, we will not be able to prove it by induction or we will not be able to prove it, period. So, thus, only if we guess it right, we will be able to prove this statement. So, there are people who actually come up with these cases by some various intuitions of their brain. But, and there are some techniques also which will help to come up with the correct cases, which we will study in the next few lectures. But again, for this particular problem, how do we prove this statement? Again, again, we have to look at the base case. So, base case n equals to 1. So, here h1 equals to 1, which is 2 power 1 minus 1, which is 1, which is right. So, the base case is correct. So, induction hypothesis. Say Hn equals to 2 power n minus 1. Inductive state. So, we have to prove. So, to prove H of n plus 1 equals to 2 power n plus 1 minus 1. Now, let's see. Hn equals to Sorry. 
8 of n plus 1 equals 2 by what is given is 2 times h n which is 1 plus 2 times 2 power n minus 1 this is again by induction hypothesis which is 1 plus 2 times n plus 1 minus 2 which is 2 times n plus 1 minus 1 and this is what we had to prove so h of n equals to 2 power n minus 1 for all n greater than equal to 1. Note that this is not only a way to proving the recurrence, this also if you go back to the, our previous video, this gives us a compact form for the number of moves required for the Tower of Hanoi problem. So the Tower of Hanoi problem therefore requires 2 power n minus 1 moves and we got it by first modeling it as a recurrence relation and then solving the recurrence relation. Now how did we solve the recurrence relation? We first guessed the recurrence relation and then we proved that the guess is right. So this is how most of the counting problems work. You first model it as a recurrence relation and then you solve the recurrence relation. But this is all this is, is fine if you can guess the recurrence relations correctly. You first guess the recurrence relation and then prove it using induction. The main question is how do you guess the solution? And we will be doing this problem of how to getting the solution to the recurrence relation in the next video. We will see one of the techniques and in the um, next few videos we will see the other techniques. Thank you.